and we are live. January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year and welcome. Got a cut on my finger. Don't remember how that got there. No, I was not drinking last night. Looks like maybe a, I don't know. I nicked it on something, or maybe the cat got me. Like to say hello to whoever's in the room and Happy New Year. Doing a uh, Spider Man mashup, so to speak. Um, this is one of the things that at conventions and stuff I'll get. Asked for a lot. Hey, David. Happy New Year. Glad you could make it in. Good to see you. Well, good to see you in the chat. <laughs> How's that? Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, this is, a, this is kind of a frequent request that both myself and my exec will get. Um, to do a split Spider-Man with half of him in the webbed costume and the other half of him being taken over by the symbiote or black Spider-Man costume. So I figured I would start the new year out by doing, um, and I might do, uh, I might do the rest of the week. Um, what's the day? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I know I'll do two more, if not the rest. Reason being is I want to do, um, I kind of built a template for this particular uh, type of drawing. So it's it's got a Spider-Man drawn on it with a split down the middle. And I'm going to do the Peter Parker side on another one. And, of course, Miles Morales will be on one side. And I could have swore I had another idea. Um, since Spider-Man is very popular right now, I figured, uh, why not, uh, use it as a vehicle to maybe get some new, um, viewers into my stream. And if they're not viewing live, maybe I can pick them up after it's published and, um, it'll It'll bring them in to watch afterwards. So I will probably wind up doing a Peter Parker Spider-Man mask and split Miles Morales split and then maybe a half Peter Parker face and half um, uh, web head costume and then the same with miles so that could be the four they get done this week if if i do if things work out um if everything goes as planned which as we know a plan is a good thing to have but it's not always um they don't always uh follow what you tell them to do Plans can shift. So, but that's that's my plan. Hopefully, uh, my plan will cooperate with me because it would be kind of cool.
David, did you uh, did you have a chance to see uh, into the Spider Verse yet? A really well done movie. My first convention of the year is February 2nd and 3rd, which, so that means it's a month away. Um, it's going to be the North Texas Comic Book Show, and that is in the Dallas, Texas area. I will be there with my mentor, friend and frequent collaborator Mike Zek so so kind of looking forward to that um that's the earliest one that I have scheduled, which I suppose that's early enough. I know there's a, a few shows going on this month. The last show that I did was the Baltimore Comic Con back in the end of September, I think. I think it was the second to the last or the last weekend of September. So it's it's been a while since um since I've been out there traveling. I hope I remember how to do it. When you travel a lot, yeah, it's like second nature and then when you take time off or when you have a lull whenever I get back to it, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. I have not seen Aquaman, David. Um, I've I've heard good things about it. I really haven't heard anything bad that I can say. I don't think I have. Um, I'm just not a big Aquaman fan, so it kind of doesn't hold any appeal uh, for me to... I don't want to say rush out and see it in a bad way, but it... It holds no appeal for me to, like, have an urgency that, oh, boy, you know, I want to see it. Now, having said that, I would see it if if Jacob showed interest in Aquaman. Um, you know, if he was like, hey, let's see Aquaman, then I, w I would probably go. But we did go see Spider-Man because everything I saw on that just looked too good to let pass by. Oh, that's good to hear. I'm glad. I'm glad your nephew liked that Batman. Um, 
I enjoyed doing that. I think adding the rain to it after the stream uh, was really added some nice atmosphere to that piece. Did you happen to um, show him where he could see it being drawn, David? Did he? Did you let him watch? Or is it still just a secret? Okay, I think I can get the brush out now. Yeah, uh, it is great to see the other heroes, and Aquaman's one of those characters that's um, kind of unusual enough that, you know, uh, it's, well... I guess uh, what I can say is, well, we're not going to see spaceships. The underwater uh, kingdom might be kind of more interesting to see. I mean, we've seen enough outer space and ships and stuff like that. So it might be a, an interesting change of scenery for that uh, aspect of it. Um, yep, send him the link. And yeah, the the rain actually, um, that was something I couldn't do on the stream because it was still drying. And I have a little hair dryer in here now that I got, so I'll be able to add those little touches. Um, if you can, you can, I can see it on my monitor, so perhaps the audience can too. Uh, you'll see that I have the... Kind of the, the the suits like swirling around uh, and dripping and oozing over into the webbed Spider-Man. Now, when I first started drawing this, I literally did a half and half, you know, like hard line split, which I'll probably wind up doing on the other ones. Um, but I forget what convention it was, but I was at a convention and some fan asked for one. Asked for one, excuse me. And um, he asked me if I could make it so the costume was creeping over into the webbing instead of just uh, the split. So it was really um, somebody that had seen one earlier that had the idea that I'm not sure if he specifically asked for it or if it just in the conversation he was just like oh are you going to have it like wrapping around him and, and something like that and that gave me the idea to do it so new year new deal on I will cover it uh, early in the stream and I will cover it again uh, online somewhere or wherever. Uh, 
the dibs on a piece that I'm working on um, still basically works the same. If, if I'm working on a piece such as this one that is unclaimed and you want to say dibs, meaning you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to buy it. Um, still just call dibs. All you got to do is type in dibs or you can hashtag dibs, whatever. First person that does that will then secure the piece as theirs. Um, and I will ask for you to secure it even further by sending PayPal. Uh, as I had noted in some other streams, though, the price is... Uh, the price is up to $60 during the stream. After, uh, after the stream is over, if no one has claimed it, uh, I will either put it in my store and it might be at the same $60 price or it might be higher, but it will not be lower because convention season is starting and I can take these drawings with me to shows to have original art pieces um, on my table. And um, they sell, so I'm not worried about uh, about moving them. The 40 deal, forty dollar deal is over. Uh, that lasted it until last night. Nobody else chimed in to capture any before the end of the year. The option that I do have open right now is a 9 by 12 full figure with uh, my option to crop the figure off the page so it's a little more dynamic so you're just not getting a stagnant figure to say it's a full figure on the page so in other words if a hand slightly goes off uh, the 9 by 12 piece of artboard well it's meant to be like that that's the way I designed it um, that does a couple things it gives you a, a bigger figure and it lets me be a little more dynamic uh, in the cropping. And that is, uh, I have shared the YouTube page that I made for the password protect on my social media so if you need to find it you can if you can't find it and want immediate access to it you can contact me or later on I might put it in the chat hey good morning Ron good morning Stephen Uh, let's see. Yeah, Happy New Year, David. Hope it will be. Got some plans for it. So same to you and Lisa there. And thanks for being able to stop in and, and catch a little bit of uh, live stream. Stephen, I'm 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 hoping that uh, that you did get the artwork that I sent to you, uh, I believe it was last week, your quick sketches. I know I did not stream the Spider-Man, but uh, I did do it as it was in your package. So I hope all of that came safe and sound. And that you were enjoying it in 2019.
Also, while I'm jibber jabbering away here, I'd like to say that uh, I've probably got some, and and this you know this kind of goes with what I've the bigger picture of what I've been working on as far as improving my art and my drawing and pretty much everything in general or trying to is I've I've got some stuff that's that's been on the back burner for years now that I'm going to try to get to and one of them is a uh independent, I guess, or self-published, whatever you want to call it, comic book that Craig Zablo will be collaborating with me on. It was an idea that I had since 2010. And we do have an eight-page, kind of like an introduction, ash can type deal. Uh, it needs to be re-looked at and tweaked a bit. But I have everything except for the character designs. We, Craig and I need to really nail down the character names. I think we have them kind of named, but I think it's always good to before you pull the trigger, look at other options. Uh, we probably will get some feedback from people on what they feel about the offering. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to work on that this year and get it out there and see if there's the interest that he and I both feel there is. Wow, really? You haven't got it yet? Hmm. And the mail is slow. Um, and I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, Stephen, what area of the U.S. you're in. Because I'm in Florida. Are you uh, up in the... Um, I swear I think somebody is up in um, the New England area. Is that your area? And if you don't want to say, I, I understand. Okay. Well, um, that's interesting. Those, uh, those that I sent out last time, I actually, since they were in the holiday time, I had tracking, uh, put on them. So that's in my car. If you don't get, if you don't receive those today and I, I still might do it, um, I'll probably be out to my car once today and I will bring in the tracking and go to the USPS.com and put the number in for yours and see where it's at.
<laughs> yep, New Year's is a postal holiday. Oh, I just read what you said, Ron. Dun, dun, dun. No, I don't want the coach. Well, that, I don't know. Personally, I think they're both overrated. They get results, but I'm not so sure about some of their tactics. Here's the thing, Ron. We know we know what to expect with Miami. Now, they should have had a minimum five. Anything over five hundred for Miami is a is a bonus, and and you know that. Now, what they did do yesterday and the week before was highly, highly, highly let us down. The beginning of their year started out brilliant. They lost, again, no surprise to you and me, they lost the teams that they should have beat. They beat teams they should not have beaten. So, we need a new team. No. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. So anyway, that under 500, that hurts. But my, my point was going to be, being a New England fan, for all those years of being number one, if you're not number one and you start seeing that slide You know that it's coming. Just a matter of where they will wind up at the end of this year. And then what will next year bring? For the Pats fans. For us, I don't think we can do worse. I, I think we, you know, we hope for another... Well, not another, but we just hope for our normal 500 season. And if we get extra gravy on the biscuit, then it's all good. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, if if you all, you know, if you win 11 games, you know, I think you all are only supposed to lose maybe one, two games tops at a year.
I'll tell you what, the Chicago Bears, they are having a really nice looking season. And I believe did I I can't Google it right now, but maybe my partner there can. Or maybe Steven knows. Did Seattle did did Seattle uh wind up at eleven and five? Or was it ten and six? And did they get into a wild card? I know some funny stuff was going out there, uh in the West. But I don't know what the final playoff picture is. I don't know if there's any straggler games that need to be played or if yesterday was it and the, um, and the playoffs are set. I, I neglected to check that out. All I know is I think there's no games for two weeks now. Yeah, Patriots did beat the Bears, but the Bears are doing well. Oh, that's going to be a good game. Seahawks and Cowboys. I am. I got to watch that. Ron, let's watch that game. Let's go somewhere and watch the, because uh, I don't like the Cowboys either. I did like them. It was it was that whole '90s thing. The uh, 49ers in the '90s, I began to really not like a lot of teams. 49ers was a team I didn't like. I had to I had to make a decision. Like when the Cowboys and 49ers played, though, you know, who did I want to win more? Or who did I, which team did I dislike more? 49ers went off my list of teams that I would like. Although I did like them when Joe Montana was there. Cowboys went off my list of teams I would root for. Again, that was pretty much when um, Staubach uh, left or retired, whatever. Patriots. The icing on the cake for the Patriots for me was the snowplow game against Miami. The Giants, I, I, I have respect for the Giants because they protected the 72 Dolphins perfect season in the Super Bowl against the undefeated New England Patriots with the helmet, helmet, uh, helmet ball, helmet on the head catch that kept that drive alive and won the game. Ah, uh, okay. That's true, Ron. Um, hmm. That's in two weeks, though, right? Or do the wild cards start this coming Saturday? I thought they had a week off.
<laughs> is that true, Stephen? If that snowplow is there, I will go. I will go to that Hall of Fame and 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 cut that thing down. Because Miami had just missed a field goal, which could have won for them. Uh, like right before that. And then they cart out their little snowplow. And, you know, I didn't even know that was a rule that they could do it. Oh. <laughs> Ron, we need to get your car and take a road trip up north. Now, it is kind of funny that it's actually there. That would be the Hall of Cheating Museum. I probably could not get in. I, I probably would not go in. Probably could not go in. It would be too painful for me to uh, walk through that hall of shame. I, I mean fame, excuse me. All right, Ron. So I, I noticed we have five people viewing. Uh, welcome. Happy New Year. Um, I'm happy to see. I had no idea that I would even get a one or two viewers. Um, I might have another stream later today as I have a full figure 9 by 12 symbiote spider-man to work on and if i get the drawing on that done i might stream the inking it's it's only going to be a black and white uh no tones no color so once i get this completed and get the uh thumbnail made youtube stuff done work area cleaned up a bit I will start my uh, sketch for the full figure. And if I get something that I'm happy with um, and get it transferred on, transferred over to the board, I'm going to ink it on. And I will definitely uh, If everything is still in order, we'll turn on the camera and start streaming that live. So if y'all are hanging out today and need a little something to do, recovery, or just in between, I'm sure there's some college bowl games if you kind of want to monitor some artwork and watch the bowl games, you could do both. Myself, I am not a college football fan because I have no idea how they figure out um, who plays in the bowls and who doesn't and how the ranking goes. And it seems to me like um, 
it's one of those things where uh, just from hearing other people complain about it, that it's it's not a good system, that it's a, a broken system and that it needs to be um, and it needs to be fixed. So yeah, um, I, uh, I haven't tried to get into it and understand it and I got other things I need to study <laughs> besides college bowl. <laughs> now that's funny uh for those of you who are interested in this snowplow game uh that was held it was in the 80s and new england won against the miami dolphins because they had a little snowplow tractor it was just snow was all over the field and miami had missed a field goal attempt but new england called the timeout or something like that or there was a timeout called, and this guy came out on a little snowplow tractor and made this nice little patch where the kicker could get the ball and make the kick. And Steven says, the driver of snow tractor was Mark Henderson, a convicted burglar who was on work release. So <laughs> there you go. Tractor gate. Add that into deflate gate. I might add that, um, these particular pieces I'm doing now are going to be color. I'm going to put the red on the webhead side of Spider-Man, and I'm going to add a blue highlight on the black side. And on the lenses, I'll probably add like a little gray, give them a little bit of shine i got a little hair or something here on the tip of this brush let me that i need to get off and let's see if i can get it you all can't see it it's too minuscule but every time i go to put the brush down okay i think that got rid of it let's hope well that's an interesting bit of trivia i did not know Stephen. thanks for uh sharing that it does add even more color to that story i was actually um i was at mike zeck's house in connecticut when that game was on and happened. And Mike being from Florida, South Florida specifically, was a Fins fan. Mike has since uh, given up watching football, especially the Dolphins. He knows they're a team that uh, has never really recovered, never got the right coach after Shula. Never got the line that Marino needed. Never got the receivers. Never got protection. Defense used to be pretty solid, but you got to win on both sides of the ball. I don't care what anyone says.
I also feel with with all the rule changes that have come over the last decades of football, um, and yeah, you can call me biased because I am a Miami fan. I think a lot of Dan Marino's records would have, you know, he didn't play under the same conditions that the quarterbacks now uh, are receiving, such as, oh, you touched me, 15-yard penalty. Or more, I guess. I don't know. I say give them flags and let them have at it. Of course, I wouldn't say that to one of their faces because uh, it might be telling a wrestler that, I mean, a wrestler that wrestling is fake. And I mean, I know the story's fake, but what I'm, you know, they take it personally that the physicality is fake, and that's not, I get it, those guys have to be in good shape. They have to be able to do some pretty extreme stuff. And I understand trying to protect, uh, Somebody playing football also. I'm not for seeing people get injured on a playing field of sports, but... I think when you play it at, at that level, I think it's um, it's something you have to seriously consider. Craig Zablo. Well, hi to you, sir, and happy new year. Uh, give Don my best if you're if you're able to head out and see him today. Say hello to Lynette for me. And I I watched about three uh, three of Amber's uh, YouTube videos this morning. And I'll I'll tell you about that uh, later on. I thought they were entertaining from from kind of different standpoints and certain ones. Maybe I just caught the right ones that were a little bit humorous. But hey, I subscribed to her channel and I put the notification bell up. Ten four there. What are we, Smokey and the Bandit? <laughs> Well, Craig would be Jackie. That means I would be the bandit.
<laughs> hey, Jerry Reed was cool. You'll be Paul Williamson. That was a ruler falling off my table. You may have a steel ruler. <laughs> All right, this is uh, this would go along pretty good. I can get this uh, inked in about an hour. That'll leave nice time for coloring and Of course, I do got to fill the blacks in, but that's okay. I would like to add, uh, while I'm thinking here, that 
there are a couple of recorded um, streams. One of me coloring a Black Panther piece, and um, one of me inking it. And then there's one of me, I th when was that? Uh, Sunday? Yeah, Sunday of me doing a Marion Cobretti piece for Craig Zabo. And those will probably be coming down um, off my channel. They're up there probably for the rest of the week. Just for viewing and for reviewing. But um, I don't think they're, they're up there for the long haul, so to speak. Um, I'm contemplating on whether even to make a thumbnail for them. They kind of look uh, barren without it, but if I plan on taking them down, I don't feel like making a thumbnail. Although I really should. But probably won't. And whoever sees this video and hears this part, like, let's say a year, two years, five years from now, they'll have no idea. <laughs> no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe they'll even try to find it, but it won't be there. So don't look. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and get some tiny blacks done here. I really should just um, re-rule these lines with the steel ruler and the brush, and that would fill the black in. In fact, I think that's that's what I'm going to do. Such a small area to be filling in a black. So today is my first day that I am also back on my, I don't want to call it a diet, but my, my new eating plan. And I, the part that I'm probably going to have to work back up to is the intermittent fasting of 18 hour fast, six hour eat window. I'm probably going to have to have a, instead of a two meal day, I'm probably going to have to go back to a three to start. At least for a couple of weeks. Because I've been off of it so long, my body is not probably going to like an 18-hour fasting window. But at my peak, it was fine. First meal was at 2. Last meal was before 8 o'clock at night. And... 
worked like a charm. Was not hungry, did not feel deprived, was not eating sugars, simple carbs. Um, not eating like fruit, but making sure I was getting all my trace minerals and vitamins and stuff. So that's something uh, I to get back on that. And that's why I started again today. And as I said, so far, so good. And but I do know that Realistically, the fasting has to be something that you kind of grow into on this. Because, boy, I've been eating some carbs. hard to go uh, through Thanksgiving and Christmas and not have carbs and sugar. If I do have any caffeine today, which I might, it will be very light and it will be in the form of a unsweet green tea, which has very little caffeine. Maybe that's how I'll, I, I, I don't really need it. It doesn't affect me, but I'm just saying if I do, if I get a feeling like, you know, I want something, then that would be my, um, my drink of choice there. My drink that I'm making for myself this morning and which I will do for every morning going forward is my ice water with organic lemon juice and apple cider vinegar in it. And you may have just heard me slurping a little bit of it there, so... That get that starts getting your gut right. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to lay the webbing down and like I said, this is going to be a full color piece. Um, so there's a lot more to come than just the webbing and filling in the blacks. There's color. <laughs> I think most of my viewers on the stream enjoy watching the color work quite a bit, and I like doing it. It's, it is something very new to me um, from just late last year, but uh, it's something that I've come to enjoy.
I believe we still have people. Well, it is the first. I'm sure some people are still asleep. Um, some people are probably still away on a little vacation. So I do want to say thank you for those of you who showed up today, taking time out of your morning. If you're in the States, taking time out of your morning, your evening, your afternoon, if you're not, to uh, watch. And if you're watching this on a replay, thank you for stopping in and watching my work. Um, if you like what you see, thumbs up. Give, it, give me a like. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free. There's no charge. A little bell will pop up. That's for notifications. That means when I'm streaming live again, or when I'm going to stream, you will be notified. It's a handy little reminder tool. And after this is done, if you're watching it live and you haven't mentioned anything in the chat, or if you're watching it recorded, there will be a comment section below. Please leave a comment. Dinner was good, Ron. Dinner was fine. I probably don't eat as adventurous as you do and as some of the food <laughs> was there, but what I had um, was quite good, as always. My wife had grilled some pork out on the barbecue at our house in the back and brought it down and she gets it so it's like not burnt but almost burnt so it's really got that crispy um that crispiness to it and she marinates it in well, the base of the marinade is made out of calamansi, which is like this small lemon-lime fruit, um, which is really nice. It's a citrusy type thing. And I had some Filipino spaghetti. Which, their spaghetti contains hot dogs instead of meatballs and it's kind of a sweet um sweet sauce and they usually do put like uh, clumps of cheese shredded cheese on it and let that kind of melt in on top so i had quite a bit of that very very good had some lumpia which is kind of like an egg roll So yeah, I uh, I enjoyed it, and it was a birthday for, I believe, um, I think for the lady who hosted, I think it was her mother-in-law who is... Uh, not that this matters only to the story, I guess, that she is American. I think it was her birthday, or they were celebrating her birthday because um, there was a really good uh, chocolate cake with coconut, like this whipped cream coconut icing on it. It's like about five layers high of chocolate cake. And on top and in between was a a whipped uh, icing with coconut lace through it. Very good. 
Very good. Could go for some more of that, if I'm being uh, honest. But trying to get everything out of my system again, so... I don't really feel the urge for it. I could probably eat it, but I'm not. I'm a man back on a mission. And that mission is to get back on my life eating in a good way. All right. <laughs> Ron, I was in bed around 9, uh, 15, 9.30 myself. I, I think I left the party at 9. Um, I knew I really needed to, um, not take time off because I need to, um, I need to work, I need to make more money, and I could have been very, very lazy today, but you know what? I figured I will come down here. I will do a daily live draw just so that I don't forget what it's like and lose my audience, which I hope I don't over the holidays. Uh, the, the audience that I have got, I believe I, I you know, and I'm thankful I believe I am currently at 118 subscribers, looking to break that 120, and then hopefully get into the 150, 200, 1,000. Man, I don't know what it would be like to have 1,000 subscribers, but maybe one day I will. That's where you all could help by... Uh, if you have a favorite episode, or if you have a drawing that I did for you that was streamed, hey, if you're out there on social media, share it. Share it with your friends. Let them know. I would appreciate that very much. Okay, so Spidey is erased and ready for black areas. I have set a goal for myself this year of, and this is, believe me, it's, it's, it's not like, uh, it's not like it sounds. I've just set a goal of how much money I would like to imagine this year. Um, and it was kind of a fun exercise to, Cut it up into how much I need per month, then per week, then per day, and then per hour. And it was, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I never did that before. I never really put down like, this is a goal I would like to attain. Um, and then when I like, when I looked at the big number, it's, and it's not a big number. I mean, really, I don't want to say I want it to be a surprise because if I reach it, I will let you know. Maybe at the end of the year, if somebody reminds me or if I remember, I'll tell you all how I did, but. It's, it's, it's not even, I mean, it's, it's modest to say the least. Um, I, I think, I'll just say this, it doesn't even, it doesn't come near six digits. And I mean like a hundred, doesn't come near that. But anyway, I digress. Um. I mean, if that happens, I'm, I'm going to be thankful and grateful, but I wanted to kind of remain realistic. So I put the number down, broke it down to how much per month. 
how much per week, how much per day, and then how much per hour based on an eight hour day. And I, I just did it as a seven a seven day work week. So I probably need to adjust that part, but with the number I have, I I'm just going to leave it where it's at because I usually work uh, seven days a week. At least some, not, not a total eight hour, but I will at least come down and put in a couple hours of work on something. So I'm, I'm going to make an effort to, and Stephen, if you're still in the room, you can probably appreciate this numbers thing, <laughs> you know. Um, anyway, it was just, uh, it was interesting for me to come down and do that this morning. Because now it, it lets me know If I'm on target or off target. But the qualifier, I guess, in all this is the other thing. The next thing I need to do. And yes, I, I do not know. My monthly, uh, what it takes for me to, to survive in a month. I've never really sat down and figured that out. It just seems to happen. So I really need to get that number and then run it against the numbers that I put down this morning. And then see what is left. I got to factor in an estimate of taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And just see where that would leave me. Because see, there's there's the other thing. Is I might have to adjustify or adjustify. I might have to adjust the number I started with. It may not be enough. Or it may be just right. I am guessing that just based on my experience, with no concrete numbers is and that's what I really need are the actual numbers the figures but I'm just taking a guess that the number I have in my head will be sufficient because I think the number in my head is realistic I don't see where it's not realistic but 
that's what I'm going to learn um, through going through this month is tracking all my expenses and seeing if it works out. If not, I will have to adjust. Maybe some off of each or some on each, or not on, on what I would like to imagine making this year and off of what I need to spend or what I am spending. Hopefully, I'm not losing y'all by, <laughs> I'm just talking about, you know, I finally realized that I got to, you know, I got to pay attention to where stuff is going. Um, you know, I have an expense here at renting, leasing an office, um, if I worked at home, that would be something that, well, I did work at home until Bella and I had Jacob and then he needed his own room. And the room I was working in became his and that left me with no place. So I had to find a place to lease. And this March or April will be my third year here now. So... I look at leasing this office, I look at it now, like, okay, we would, number one, have to get a bigger home for me to, to have an in-home office, but I'm thinking, am I more productive outside or at home? Now, I got two theories on that, or maybe more. I like the idea of being able to just um, wake up and go over to my office, which I used to be able to do, and I can't any longer. But another part of me enjoys now the routine of coming to a place of work. where I don't have, um, you know, let's say my, my bedroom, my bed, my nap, my, you know, that type of stuff. Where I can actually um, get out and see people. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, so it's, it's been interesting. And so it's one of those things where eventually I will have to decide, should I keep paying rent or should I find a place that would allow me to work back at home you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm kind of used to working outside of the house now. Um, I think it's almost a healthy thing in many different layers. Because when I'm home, I try to be at home, if you know what I mean. And not at work. Hey, Don. Hey, AG. Good morning. A happy New Year to you guys. Glad you could make it. Good to see you. I 
I'm working on a uh, kind of a mashup webhead Spider-Man being uh, taken over by the symbiote Spider-Man suit. I hadn't looked at the chat, so you guys came in to hear me pontificating about uh, my financial uh, goals and interesting things I, I've been pondering this morning. That's the one thing I think a new year does is it, you know, I, I pretty much, I'm not a big resolution guy. Um, but I do have to say that, you know, that new year, that new calendar, that new start, makes me rethink a lot. Um, and I know you can do that anytime. You can do it on a Wednesday. You can do it on a Friday. It's a mindset. But there's something, I think it's built into us from New Year's resolutions and, and whatnot that we always feel like, oh, you know, Okay, when the new year starts, I'm I'm going to lose weight, you know. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to do this. Don't need that new year. You just need a mindset check or correction. Although with this particular thing, a you know, at least for me, a financial ending a financial year, beginning a new one. I think that's what's kind of has me more excited than anything is that I'm going to try to meet these goals and keep better track of my spending and my income and my outgo. And at the end of the year, be able to say, well, this is where it went. This is what I made. This is where it went. Because as of right now, I don't have a good idea of that. So. I've been, been living too much like a high school kid for far too long. And I mean that not in the fact that I'm not going to provide for my family. I mean that in that, you know, I'm I'm not watching where stuff is moving. I just, you know, I pull the trigger sometimes without thinking it through. I think uh, most people are guilty of that, and most people... have probably adapted or changed and it's time for me to really realize that and I have well thank you Ron And I think that has all the blacks filled in now. Let me tape it up a little bit higher. Let that dry a little bit. And um, I will go back over while this is drying. This is going to get color, full color, red, uh, blue over on the highlight. You know what? 
sorry to interrupt my own little speech, but when I do this, um, yeah, let me show you this little area here. Up oh, too much. This little area down here. Um, I may as well just fill that in black. It is so tiny. I think here this will give you all a better view. This little area here. It's it's so tiny that just losing it into black works so much better. Yeah, technically it should probably be left white, but um, visually it's it's a little distracting down there. So pro tip for the day. You can cheat a bit and um, it'll look better. So back to the new year and the new uh, daily live draw episode 34. Uh, as I was or as I had spoken about last year. Um, the $40 by December 31st special has came and went and now dibs in a live stream. The pieces are now $60 instead of 50. If the piece does not go during the stream, uh, I will probably wind up putting it on my shop for sale. It may be at the said $60 price, or it may be more, um, depending upon how much work and what I feel uh, the piece is worth. The reason I am saying this is that I know now for a fact, this is not going to be a $60 piece after the stream. Um, here's the reason. Um, my first convention is February 2nd and 3rd. So if I don't sell it on the stream, if I don't sell it in my store, uh, I will have my own drawings to, um, and I've, I, I did it last year. I would do a few little drawings like this or a sketch cover or something to take with me to a convention to have extra stuff on my table to sell because people would either come up, they would want a drawing, I wouldn't have time. Uh, they would, you know, just see it and want to buy it. Um, so there is equity in what I'm doing. Uh, so beyond the entertainment and educational value, um, there is uh, money to be made on the table. So, um, you know, just something that I, I want to be fair with my audience with that, um, that I appreciate you all. And that's why y'all always have first crack at taking something and at a, at a possibly lower rate. Uh, so anyway, I think we're probably dry enough here and I'm, I was looking at how Alex Ross handled the Reds in Spider-Man. And I was thinking I might do kind of kind of what he does where there's like some white area left where the shine is. So I was thinking about maybe gray toning some of Spider-Man so that you get that shadow when I put red over it. This side's going to be blue, so uh, I think it can stand by itself, or I will add a, I don't know if I'll add a second tonal value to it. The spider here will be white. I will probably add maybe a little streak or so of gray to it. Um, maybe. Not 100% sure of that yet. But I am going to do it to the lens uh, a Spider-Man's eyes like I normally do. I did pick that up from like a uh, Paulo Rivera and Alex Ross. So that's what I'm thinking, Ron. <laughs> you, you read my mind. 
that's what I put on my smaller pieces at shows, and that's what they were selling for. So that's probably what it'll wind up with or wind up at in my store when it's done. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, thinking about adding a little bit of darker gray onto the suit before I put red on it just to give Spider-Man a little more um, uh, uh, a little more feeling of dimension I guess would be the best word I could I could use there so I'm gonna start first with a little water wash over the red areas before I go in with a gray and according to my friend Paolo who I asked on his stream he said the water wash will help smooth the gradations and the in the color so I I trust his knowledge and I've done it a few times already and it it does seem to to work good man Paulo Rivera good artist knows what he's doing So I'm just laying down, and it's only going to be on this red side, because like I said, it's the only side that I'm going to do some gray and then put a red over. The blue can stand on its on its own, and I don't even know what kind of effect I'm going to get on the red side. I'm, I haven't practiced it, but there's a first time to do it, so you all are here to witness <laughs> either something pretty cool happen or a Hindenburg disaster well I guess not quite that level but um, something that may not you know I'll be honest may, may not turn out to be the best best call I've ever made Little hair dryer action. Oops, what fell off? Oh, just a bottle of ink that was luckily and on purpose closed. So no damage done, which is good. Okay. So a little bit of gray tone on Spider-Man. Just to give that suit a little bit of pop, I'm thinking. Okay, I need a little bit more than that. Where am I going to go? I'm going to... I'm going to have to make a little bit of darker wash here. So let's see what I can come up with. Seems like whatever I start with, it's always too dark. The wash water I was using was way too light. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably going to be too dark what I got going. So I'm working over here on the side that I know you all can't see it. I apologize, but is it going to be too dark? I think it is, so... 
I'm just going to suction a little bit up, put it over here, a little bit of water, tone it down, and then that's my, uh, if you can hear that clinking right there, I have two of these uh, porcelain pallets stacked there. I'm thinking that's a gray. I should probably be doing this. I'm thinking this is the gray tone that I want. It's going to be dark enough that when I put the red over it, it um, it shows up. Yes, I did get that hair dryer, AG. Um, I actually, I had it. Um, when did I get that? The day after Christmas, I was coming down here, the 26th. It was a little bit later in the day, and the CVS pharmacy was uh, open. And I, I was, I had passed that place a couple of times, and um, I almost passed it again, and I just said, you know what? As many times as I could have used that dryer, I should just go in and check. And I think they had, I think they had it like nine ninety nine off or something. I picked it up for I think seven ninety nine or eight ninety nine. It was just under twenty dollars. I think I think the the full price for it was like eighteen or seventeen ninety nine, and it was like, but I I think it was eight ninety nine. So that would have made it like what, $9 off or something? I don't know. And some, you know, <laughs> one of those deals. I'm I'm trying to figure out math that really doesn't matter in a way, but since we, we kind of had talked about it, um, I'm going to that conversation. I'm letting that happen. Because it is, it's, it's, I've used it a few times now and boy, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm glad I have it. Now you said you had one too, right? AG, when you do some wash or watercolor, you have one to, to speed your dry time up so that you're not waiting um, to add another, another layer on your commissions. And it's the perfect size. I mean, you know, that's that's the beauty of it too, is it's it's just perfect. They had a bigger one, believe it or not, that was cheaper. But I didn't need that huge one. Well, it, it not that it was even huge, but this one is really that that perfect size. At least for my needs, it is. It's 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 the good size. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? That goes to show that, you know, a product is not always uh, bought for what it was essentially made for, right?
or uh, maybe not essentially, but um, specifically or for the intent. You know, there's other purposes. There's other things that that stuff can be used for. And I find and, and you know, this is a funny thing. Artists are usually, you know, it's one of those things where doing artwork. Um, you, you know, like using Q-tips or I mean, that's, you know, using something else. Uh, Bill Sienkiewicz uses these little makeup sponges on on stuff. And it's really interesting to see him work with those to get a certain, you know, that little soft spongy texture on some of his work. But who would think, you know, with him going into a store to pick up like a hundred makeup sponges, you know, who would think he's picking them up to do artwork with? So pretty interesting, pretty funny. And we'll take the heat, wah, 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 pun intended. All right, that's enough there. Ray Dog, what's up? Happy New Year, homie. That's true, AG. You never know. You never know what's going to... Uh... Yeah, those uh, those makeup sponges, they're like little triangle shapes, and they're, they're very soft, and you can use them like kind of like a dry brush thing for texture and technique or for blending like you, you noted there. Uh, very interesting. Or Bill will just use them as the triangle shape. You know, he'll use them like kind of like a geometric type thing.
All right, and I think since I have it out, why not, right? Why not do my um, my grays here? This is going to be a little different because I'm purposely giving this a light overall wash on the lenses. All right. It's that time, AG. Get a little hair dryer action going. So everybody, uh, <clears throat> if your volume's up and this is too loud, here it comes. So cover your ears. Is that the same bottle of ink? No, that's a different one. I'm going to have to get another extension or something to put that hair dryer behind me instead of in front of me where all my supplies are resting because the cord keeps snagging it. But I can get to that. All right. So I am going to, uh, let's see. I am going to use, there was one last thing I wanted to, 
kind of want to do these. Um, it's not going to be. trying to get, uh, I want to do the kind of the flash glowy lines that I've been doing that you all have seen on some of these. I got to get more of the ink wash out of this brush. To, there we go. I need to have a little hook on my uh, 
on my drawing board that I can put that hair dryer on. So I can just pull it up like a pistol and give it a shot when I need it. <laughs> that would work. Okay, so going to put black ones on the other side that's not as dark. Let's make sure I get nice and dry on these. We'll give it a shot here. All right, Perfecto Garcia. Well, don't know if it's perfect, but I like it, so. <laughs> now I'm thinking... I'm still working with gray, so I should probably do. <clears throat> I should probably get the um, the lenses done. Let me take another sip here of my concoction of the morning. That's what I need, AG, right there. Yep. I need a, a little screw hook in the side of my drawing board. Um, I just have a table next to it, and it's got a little hook on the end that I could just hook it to. I'll eventually get around to that if I can find. I got I got to do a little bit of rearranging here in my office. But I think I'm going to wind up doing that so I can just, um, like I said, just whenever I need it, just boom. There it is. Give a quick air dry. Um, but, uh, I'm wondering what I think I would like to do is on the symbiote Spider-Man side is a um i want to do one eye like vertical and one eye horizontal if you follow me which i'm sure you do as i'm always clear as can be right <laughs> like that. Hey, Shannon. Good morning and Happy New Year to you, sir. I trust everything has been going well.
course, we're not that far into the new year, but hopefully everybody has a great 2019. If you had a great 2018, congratulations, and I hope your new year is, your 2019 is even better. And on this one, I want more of a different lens. So I'm going to give a little darker core here. And shadow it down. And then here, hopefully I'll get the effect I want. This is where I need a shot of the hair dryer. Hold on, everybody. You know, I just, these are, um, these are six by eight, and I'm thinking that is a standard frame size, isn't it? I'm thinking what I, what I would like to do is, um, either get some mats that are pre, you know, pre-cut, I think six by eight is that size where I can get them at like Michael's or something or a little bag to put these in to somehow protect them. For the red or scarlet actually 5a scarlet dr ph martin's radiant concentrated watercolor i'm going to shake this up and remember this is the one that for some reason the pressure came back and got me that day 
Made my hand look like it got cut. Hey, good morning, Dr. Kaz. Happy New Year to you too, sir. I need to start looking at the top and go down. I saw Shannon. I miss you, Dr. Kaz. Much apologies. Okay. Now, I think I am going to. Yep, still got red in it. This brush that I've been using for red, no matter how many times I, I, I should just buy a brush for red. I think it's such a strong color that no matter what I do, it's it's not going to come out. Uh, no matter how many times I wash it, I'm still going to retain some red in it, which I guess will be fine. Um, I'll just have to learn to. Uh, Just have to learn that I need a, a brush for red. Maybe it is one of those colors um, that is so intense. That it, it doesn't play nice with other brushes. That could be. Get some more water on this. Boy, I probably put way too much red out than I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna kind of start out light here and work into because I wanna kind of leave a little. This will go into a deeper red. I just want to cover the area while I'm while I'm moving it wet. Okay. Funny, I want to say let this dry, but I don't need to really go over it with the hair dryer. Hmm, that is interesting, uh, AG. Thank you, Ron. Um, I'm getting a little more painterly on it, as you may have noticed. <laughs> and uh, 
we're into the new year. So new experimentation from me, I guess. It's like I was telling you this weekend when you were over that I, I, I got to make this illustration thing a um, little more successful. The conventions are nice, but I want to illustrate more, so. I got to push myself in lots of different ways, but I'm prepared. I've been preparing myself for the new year for the past few months. Now it's here and so I'm making my efforts of what my mindset has been trying to make them work we'll see it's going to be a fun year i'll tell you that or it's going to be a fun year or it's going to be three months and i'll be working at uh, a wholesale club as a stalker at night and I, I don't mean a stalker in a bad way, <laughs> the way that sounded. Uh, and I didn't want to say stock boy. So, but that's kind of the. Uh, and then I'll just be doing fan art at home after the <clears throat> real job. It does, uh, AG. It makes a, a big difference. And like I said, I, I'm i still going back over. I'm going to leave the, the whites, um, but I'm going to go back over the inner. It's, it's a little bit. This white will be left on the collarbone, this little bit of white. But all back in here, I'm going to go back in um, with pure red as the darkest tone kind of like in in his mask it's a little dark there already because it's being taken over but um uh no no dibs yet ron and i i have explained the new dibs rule twice but I will um, let me dry this red.
The new dibs rules that took effect at 12.01 <laughs> this morning, I guess, were, okay, we lost the $40 uh, daily live draw option that expired on December 31st, like I said. And the new dibs rule is only that the daily live drawings are now at $60 and not at 50 um, I had to go up on my price because I'm putting a lot of work into these. Uh, and if they don't sell during a stream, I only do that for the people that are here live because... Usually they show up every day, and I want to do something nice for the people that support me. Um, if nobody calls dibs during a stream, then I will put it in my shop either at the, it depends, it, you know, at the same price, and they can pick it up later. Uh, it might go to a convention with me if it doesn't sell off of my shop. The first show I have this year will be February 2nd and 3rd. So if I have a collection of these to take with me, that's fine too. Um, and like I said, the shop price may be more than the dibs price. And my first thinking on this one is this one will be priced once it hits the shop at $100. So that's that's the quick rundown so just so everybody knows um uh, what what the new rules are i'm gonna have to write those down somewhere uh maybe on the um discussion page but then whenever it changes i'll have to change that but that's fine i can change it all right, so now we're really going to hit the red. And I did explain earlier, and I'm not sure who was in the room or not, but I think this week, uh, the next ones that I do, I kind of made a little template of this same um, uh, this this same split face Spider-Man. And what I think I'm going to do is. Because this one came about because I get this request a lot at conventions, usually on sketch covers or uh, sometimes on paper of the, uh, let's say, the Peter Parker webhead Spider-Man being taken over by the symbiote Spider-Man. So people kind of like the, the split. Um, 
So I'm probably going to do another one with one side webhead Peter Parker. And the other side will be uh, Miles Morales uh, mask. And however far down we chest chest area to the body. And then if I get to it and feel it's something fun, and I did mention this earlier, so I might, uh, especially with the Spider-Verse movie being number one right now, um, I'll probably do half of one Spider-Man mask, other half Peter Parker face, uh, Miles Morales mask, other half Miles Morales face. So that's, this is Tuesday, right? These holidays, the way they fell this year really threw me off. So if that's the case, then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would have three more. Yeah, that would work out to the four. Whoops. All right. I believe it's time for the hair dryer. I wonder if uh, Alex Ross or or Paulo hair use a hair dryer. Andrew Robinson said he doesn't. He said it dries pretty quick, and it does. The only problem is it dries quick in about five or ten minutes to get as much dry as I got right there in a matter of seconds. So real quick, what I need to do is change out um, my water, get rid of the red because I'm going to go in with blue. Um, hey, thanks, AG. Uh, once you see the scan... I think you're on, um, I, I usually only post these on Twitter, but once you see the scan with the extra, um, like tonal, the values in there, it even pops a little more. Um, I, 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 uh, am not sure if I'm going to go that far with it, but I'm almost tempted to do a little bit of white on the webbing that might be a little bit too much work i might just be <laughs> i might just be getting myself into doing a, a really detailed painting for uh although i could see it i i mean i really could i could see doing that but mm, i could see not doing it too so i am going to take a quick break and take two of these uh, uh waters and dump them out and get clean water. So I'll be right back.
<clears throat> okay, should be back on live. Um, got that done. Got to use the restroom real quick. And now we're going to finish this up with blue. And I'm thinking um, at least on the at least on the lens with the red, I think the lower part, I'm going to do a, yeah, I'm going to water it down, but I'm going to do a very pale blue over that, um, over that lens. I think that's going to be a, a cool effect. I kind of like the idea of, um, I need to tape this back up while I get some blue out. I like the effect of the gray being more of a tone of white because the spider here is white on this suit and uh, only the highlights, um, which I probably... You know, now that I've done the red, I will treat I will treat them the same way. I'll I'll do a light blue. I don't know if I'll particularly leave any white, but I will do a light blue wash and then go back in and hit it with the dryer real quick and just so it, it evens it out so it's not uh I have some gray strokes down here that are probably not, yeah, they're a little visible on camera. Um, but I don't want them to be too, too dominant. And I, I'm tempted to put some blue on that. We'll see how it goes. And of course, I just put my brush that for some reason really holds the red which I'm glad when I need red and it seems like I've used a lot of red yet lately with the Spider-Man the Hellboy and uh, seems like something else I did was red but I'm gonna get my other brush out for the blue because I don't want my light blue to turn purple on me. Okay, that's a little darker than I want, but I'm going to have a dab tissue by to take some of the color off should it um should it need it yeah it's not bad going over the dark gray it's it's not like looking at it on white Actually, it's very faint. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't even think y'all can see it on on the monitor. So I'm gonna sneak a little bit of it up here too. So this is all going to be the darkest blue. So I'm not worried about hitting it with a light. Although 
I should probably do it just so the colors definitely smooth out. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had a little bit more water I can go ahead and put a little bit. Yeah, I know I said I wouldn't. But it's going to be very faint on this white spider. And that is probably too faint. Let's see what I get. That's too blue. Let's remove that. There we go. And more water. Dab and spread. There we go. I'm going to hit a little more blue on the corners. Actually, I'm liking it. <laughs> Interesting. It's those happy accidents. I really got that wet, though. So you know what that means. I don't have to wait. <clears throat> I don't have to wait a long time anymore for that to really dry. But I do like it a lot, actually. All I have to do is... Wow, I can actually... Could actually see that um, except for these really big dollops there I could actually see that drawing on the page that was pretty cool okay so next step it's all layering that's what I was told so let me see if I want to do um, going to have my little, uh, if I want to do this a little darker, I think I'm going to do a dark and dab it. Yeah. Yep, that'll work. Okay. You can't really, I don't think you can, at least, because it's even hard for me to see it. It's faint, but it's definitely like a blue and then like a gray up top where it would be kind of a, a, a white hitting the top of the lens. <clears throat> so now I just go in with this blue first and just full saturation and I know what I'm gonna have to do is get some of my well maybe not depends on how bright we want this bright is good bright will make it pop on the original and yeah it's a little still a little dark on on screen but Everything else is, it's very bright, which I tend to like, by the way. I like the brightness.
a, a dry and then another layer which saturates it more. Wow, I didn't know it was almost noon. That would mean with my drawing time this morning of about an hour and three hours of ink and color work, I've, I've, got, about, I've got like four hours at least in this. Oh, well. It's a good learn. It's a good learning thing. And uh, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask. I will answer them to the best of my ability. We're we're in this together. We're we're learning and running together for the most part. I'm happy to have you all and I'm happy to answer questions. So if anything comes to mind, please ask. And if it comes later, <clears throat> don't forget, you can always leave a question, a comment, whatever in the comment section. And if you're just currently watching and not subscribed to the channel, the subscription is free. It doesn't cost anything. So click that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up that you like it, if you like it. And feel free to leave a comment. In, in this one or any of my other videos that are on my channel and I will get back in touch with you on what's up okay so I'm trying to hold this down as flat as possible that's up into the light some I think I want to hit this blue one last time. Just call me Mr. Saturation. <laughs> Interesting. People, I just found out that high on that little one is da is down. I've I've had it on low. Usually, when you go up on a hair dryer, it's high. That one, it's down. Just really want one last little coat on these blue pieces mostly inside Now, like I said, I do have a 9x12 full figure special going on. 
I'm sure most of you all have heard about that by now, either through me sending it to you directly or you hearing about it on a stream or through Facebook, either my personal page or fan page or through Twitter. So those are still available. I have a Symbiote Spider-Man that I have next on my list. Um, Jerome Lee, if you're out there, I sent you a follow-up email yesterday. Just seeing if you received my first email. I have not heard back from you. So I don't know. I can't go forward on your commissions without a confirmation from you. Um, But if you're still interested in picking up what we discussed on Friday, Saturday, uh, please get back in touch with me and let me know. Because um, if, I, if I fill up more of those spots, I'm not going to be able to fit extras in. Um, and if anybody that's listening now has not seen that... Um, that particular special and you're interested let me know now i will put the um thank you thank you ag um let me know in the chat now and i will drop that link in there and uh you can you can read about it and decide if you'd like to um like to get something I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that, number one, I have not covered on this or that I have not covered on what I have going on right now. I think we're good. I will say that since it's this close to noon, I'll probably run home. I have to get some more apple cider vinegar and organic lemon juice. So that was something I had to do anyway, but since it's close to where I live, I'll just run home, grab some lunch, come back, try to get my sketch done for that full figure. And if I get him flushed out on paper, then I'm definitely going to stream that inking. So if you all are up for another live stream today, it may happen. I have one more. This is me talking to myself. I have one more. I am thinking that I like the little bit of light blue so much on the eye, the lens of the other Spider-Man, that I might just put it on the black Spider-Man side. I mean, just the faintest blue dry brushed in. And I think I will. I, I think it's not going to hurt it. I think it's going to be kind of cool. Well, blue is a cool color, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get some blue on the brush. Get some water going on it. Now get some water out of it. not sure that you all can fully appreciate that little touch there like I can. Uh, you know what? One more little thing. I'm going to go ahead and I kind of like that. Let me give it. I want this. Um transition here to be a little 
less stark especially since I'm using color I can I can play around a little more than if it was just black and white and I think I think that's gonna do it Okay, let's see, let's put one over here and under my scanner and it's really dry, so I don't have to worry about putting the scanner lid over it and it like getting horribly ruined. So that's it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kaz. Thank you, AG. Ron, thank you. Um, anybody else? Uh, Shannon, I appreciate it. Again, uh, I will um, probably, hopefully, depending on what's going on at my house when I get there, I got to come back and do a full figure Spider Man symbiote so might be inking that later today i hope you all can join me then um this spider-man is there's no dibs on it yet so i will give you a few more seconds if anybody wants to call dibs on it now please do or it will go into the store um or also to a convention with me Shannon will take dibs. Okay, sir. It is yours for $60. Thank you very much. And you have my information, correct, Shannon? I think you're going to be very happy once you see the original, or once you see the scan. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, I appreciate it, Shannon. Um, tomorrow I will be, I'm, I'm planning on being back on. Today, what did I start around 9? I thought I was actually going to be able to start around 8, but time got away and uh, I didn't get a chance to. So 9 o'clock it was and here it is at 12. So, okay. Uh, again, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to scan this, make my thumbnail, get the YouTube stuff done, get this up on Twitter. Um, and uh, I will see you all hopefully later today. If not later today, we'll do it again tomorrow. And I am probably thinking tomorrow will be 7 or 8 o'clock. But if it's in, don't hold me to that yet. Um, could be nine until later today or tomorrow. Thanks everybody for your support and stopping by and Hey, on your way out. Don't forget to give me a like. Appreciate it. Y'all take care. See you later. Bye.